welcome us all into the house of the Lord today. We're not going to be long. I want to welcome those who are in the house here and those who are in the virtual house. Welcome to those who are watching online. We are going to be um, teaching from the study guide, the latest study guide that the Lord has delivered to us because the latest truth will be the present truth. And we have to teach the present truth. Amen? Amen. So we are coming out of a study guide that is titled the World Conference Study Guide. And by the way, brothers and brother, well, it's two young brothers, yes, because Michael will make it plural. Bro <laughs> brothers and sisters. Um, the reality is when God has spoken a word and he's caused us to document it, Part of our manifestation that we believe it is to be able to have the written word that God has spoken to us in the present time available to us. And we need to read it and we need to make sure that we understand how it guides us into the scriptures, how it guides us into our everyday life and experiences to live it out in them and to make sure that we honor our God. Amen? Amen. So this study guide is titled, The Kingdom of God Revealed. Oftentimes, we hear of a title of a study guide, and we just slip by it, all right? I love to do some justice to the title, because it sometimes sets a context as to what God is really saying in the entire body of that guide. Are you with me? So let us pray. Father, we thank you today for your mercy and for your grace. We thank you for continuing to speak to us. We thank you for challenging us to fear you and to fear the reality that if we don't live up to the standard that we can be lost, even though we have been saved by the Holy Ghost. And so, Lord, today we just ask you, O oh God, to help us to hear you and that we'll honor you that when you speak, we obey you because that's all that you ask of us. Lord, we ask that you will deliver the word that is in your heart to us and help us to embrace it and hide it in our hearts that we will not have to sin against you. We thank you and we praise you and we glorify you because we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so the kingdom of God revealed. All right? I don't want the term the kingdom of God to be a cliche to us. If it is, for some of us it may not be. But I don't want for us to just hear the term the kingdom of God. And even in hearing it, it doesn't stir something in us because of the gravity of what that kingdom means to God. It should mean the same thing to us. The kingdom of God. So when you think of a kingdom, you think of reigning. You think of a king. You think of dominionship. Amen? Don't you? So the kingdom of God is a kingdom where God is king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where Jesus Christ is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And his kingdom knows no end. Hallelujah. Every king that reigns at some point dies. And somebody inherits the kingdom. Or the kingdom is taken away. Or a new kingdom is established in place of the old kingdom. But this kingdom of God is a kingdom that has no end. Are you with me? Hallelujah. There is no one that can dethrone the king of kings. Hallelujah. He will reign forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. And he's not only going to reign in an invisible way. There is a time when the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom will be reigning from earth. Are you understanding? Are you with me? Now, if we are a part of that kingdom, we need to rejoice. Because you know what? What allows us to become a part of the kingdom is just having the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You know, it is a blessing. And you know, God 
favors us when he gives us himself. When he gives us the Holy Spirit, he gives us himself. You know, when, when uh, Mary was just going to carry Jesus, the scripture says, you are highly favored. But we who are carrying Jesus in our earthen vessels, we don't even see the highly favored that God has given to us. Brethren, we are highly favored of God that he would choose to come and live within us. Amen? So I want for us when we hear the kingdom of God, that we recognize we are part of that kingdom and it should stir something in us that makes us rejoice. You know, some of us who, the, the Holy Ghost, when, when he shakes us sometimes, like he just li literally quickens us, like shakes us, you know, sometimes when you hear some of these things and you understand the depth of it, Sister Thelma, it should quicken something in you. Uh, they're talking about us. The, the kingdom of God, it's talking about us. Hallelujah. So we're talking about the kingdom of God revealed, all right? I'm not going to go into all of um, explaining what revealed is, but we know what that is. It's make plain. It's, it's, it's exposed. People can see it, all right? So the kingdom of God revealed. So let's start in chapter one. All right? I really thought it was necessary to kind of set that background. Because chapter one is going to be dealing with a world that we live in, and that world is in chaos. All right? All right. So the chapter is titled, The World in Chaos. I want to go back to something, though. I want to go back to a scripture and then we come back to the, this chapter. Romans 14, verse 17. It tells us something about the kingdom of God. All right, don't yet have a reader, but so let's go. Romans 14, verse 17 says, For the kingdom of God is what? Not, not that one. <laughs> That's also an excellent one, all right? The kingdom of God is within us, all right? Yes, all right. So Sister Jean is as excited to hear about the kingdom of God now. Um, and she knows about the kingdom of God. She's a true prophet of God. And she's excited because she knows that the kingdom of God is within us. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This scripture implies it, but it doesn't say it explicitly as, as, as that. Uh, other scripture. So Romans 14 verse 17 says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. All right. The preceding verse was dealing with um, eating and days that people worship and so on and so forth. So it's not the banqueting. It's not what you eat and don't eat. All right. There are churches who say that you can eat certain things and you cannot eat certain things. The Lord said we shouldn't be talking about that. If you don't eat it, you don't eat it as unto the Lord. If you eat it, you eat it as unto the Lord. All right? But the kingdom of God is not about food. So it's not about meat and drink. This thing is not um, uh, cooperating with me very much. But, um, but it is what? Righteousness Hallelujah. What is righteousness? Hmm? Right standing with God. That was just acceptable to God, all right? So if you told me um, the right standing with God, holiness, godliness, righteousness is that which is acceptable to God. Do you know that at salvation, we were made the righteousness of God? God made us his righteousness. We are the righteousness of God. So we need to remain his righteousness. Let's not mess it up. Let's not pervert it. Let us remain acceptable unto God. So the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness. So when people see us walking in a life, living away, meaning our conversation, not just what comes out, our lifestyle, our culture, that, that, that's, that's our conversation according to the scripture. When people see us living like that, they don't have to ask what righteousness is. 
our living it out has defined it for them. You with me? Hallelujah. So the kingdom of God is righteousness. And what else? Peace. Hallelujah. You know, you probably heard, if you were listening well, the recap that Sister Jen did. Because the Lord spoke to us two weeks ago, and all he was talking to us it was about peace. Being joined to the Lord. Not having all kind of confusion in our heads. Noiselessness. You know, sometimes there's just so much noise and so much confusion going on in people's mind. They can't fall asleep. They're not at peace. They're tossing and turning on their pillows. They stretch out and then they bring up back their knees and they throw off their cover and then bring it back and they get up to walk the house. They can't sleep. No peace. Lots of noise and voices and ideas and, and worries and anxieties going on in their heads. But we just learned that peace is what? Noiselessness. All right? Peace is to set at one again. And that one is with our Lord. Righteousness, joy, and, and peace and joy. So we didn't deal with the joy. In the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now that is important because there is not one of us who has received the Holy Ghost that did not experience an exhilarating kind of joy that you could not explain to people why you were so happy. All right? So, so when the Bible really describes that joy that is in the kingdom as joy unspeakable, it doesn't mean that you are dumb. All right. It just means that where is the word in the vocabulary of human beings to explain the depth and intensity of this joy that I'm feeling? That's all that means. Are you with me? So are we seeing the kingdom now? Hallelujah. So let us go now into the into this into the into the word that God has given us. Having set the context of who we are in this world. We are those who are the righteousness of God. We are those who are living in peace. We are those who have such joy that it makes no sense to people because what's going on around us, we should have long faces and be crying. And what we are going through, because God says that he did not just call us to believe but to suffer. So when we go through our suffering, people are wondering if, if we're really for real. You know what I mean? So now, when we are talking now, and we're about to teach this, script, this chapter of the world in chaos, we should not be a part of that chaos or chaotic world. What do I mean? We should not be experiencing or be partaking of the chaoticness of this world. Yes, the world is in chaos. And the chaos is going to worsen. But where are we as sons of God in it? Are you with me? Are you with me? Do you see the world in chaos? It's the whole heap of chaos. All right? So we, we see all kinds of things. When I was thinking about it, I'm saying, oh, this is just so crazy. This is crazy. You know, I grew up in schools in Jamaica where teachers were revered. I don't know about... So, yeah, teachers were revered. At the school was like a home away from home. You know? We teach people, then they have playtime, then they have co-curricular activities. But no, you're not even sure whether or not if you send your child to school today, they are coming back alive in this country that we live in. Because many have gone to school and were killed in school. They may not have been killed by the gun, but they were stabbed, shot up, died. Boys dying, girls dying. Parents did not see their kids come back home to them. Hallelujah. Kids being sent on a taxi and never reached school. 
by the time later on. Are you hearing? So there's a lot of crazy stuff that is going on in this world. Now, in some sections of the world, you send your little child to school, you know anatomically what they are, that this one is a boy, this one is a girl. But the teachers can tell that any of them, you can choose to be what you want to be. You can choose to either be a boy or you can choose to either be a girl. Now, if, you're a, if you are a boy who wants to be a girl, then just choose to be a girl and we'll help to make you look and shape like a girl. And if you're a girl and wants to be a boy, we can just make you also look like a boy because we know how to do that if you choose to be a boy. Now, if that is not chaos and confusion in a little child's mind, what would you call that? But where the Lord took us today um, in this season, in the World Conference about the world in chaos, it's talking about where is the answer to this chaotic world? What's going on in our churches to make the world see and know that we have not been merged together? There is a set of people walking this earth which are from another kingdom that have the answers to your confusion if you want to come out of the chaos. But guess what? Some of us in the church have joined the chaos and we are not able to help each other or help the sinner who is looking for an answer from the world. Are you with me? Now, if that is not chaos of the highest order, I don't know what would be chaos. Hallelujah. If, if we say that Jesus lives within us, and he does, and if we say that Jesus is the answer, and he is, and if the scripture says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, why should there be chaos in the church and we cause chaos amongst ourselves and give no answer to the chaos in the world? So that is what God is trying to address in this particular um, uh, chapter. Are you with me? All right? I say I'm going to take my time. And when I start to teach, I get a little passionate. So I'm also going to try to calm down to see if I can stand here and read some things and just explain some things that the Lord has put in my heart. I have always wondered why Christians decide to march against sin. March. Always. So when a bishop is going to take up and want 10,000 men to march in a community against violence and included in these men are unsaved men who are either the perpetrators of violence, some of them, or the victims of violence, but together, unsaved, and Christian men are going to join in a number of at least 10,000 to walk through a community, and that should bring peace. That should bring God on the scene. I've always wondered about things like that. Any of you have ever wondered about that? Not really? Not really? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I have. I have, been, I have been invited to come to prayer in a place called Emancipation Park. It's a big park here in Jamaica. And Christians and non-Christians are going to gather together to pray against certain laws that they are trying to amend. That the laws will not be amended and even march against it. I'm not saying that you may have a, not have a different conviction. I'm just saying to myself, when way back then, and even currently, because there are some other marches going on now, I say to myself, 
Why am I not in my secret closet interceding for those who should be delivered? Why am I going to join hundreds and thousands of people in a park where we are all of different minds, come there with different agenda to be part of a crowd to talk about a law that needs amending or does not need to be amended? And the ones that come to mind now is the abortion law and the buggery law. We go to God. Hallelujah. If a young lady has terminated a baby, I need to pray for her. I need to pray for the doctor. I need to pray for the nurse who assisted in the process. I don't need to be going public to make my um, God move on my behalf. I take that to God. If people are in homosexuality. It's an activity. It's a captivity of the devil. You don't have to go and demonstrate. The same way I'm praying for the murderer. The same way I'm praying for the pedophile. The same way I'm praying for the liar. I'm supposed to pray for the effeminate. And the lesbian. And the queer. And the those who are wondering who they are and don't know who they are because they're confused. So I've always wondered. Why is it I have to join the world and the world system to do a religious act to get God's attention to deal with the situations around me? Well, we don't have to. So I'm going to read some of what God has given us to us here verbatim because what the Lord has shown us here is how the churches in a particular continent, has taken the pulpits of God and has used them for political campaigning. Are you hearing him? Are you hearing him? <laughs> years ago, years ago, there was a, a, a thing here in Jamaica, I'm remembering it now, and I remember the Jamaica Council of Churches told their preachers to go and tell their people to pray for the government to change. Yes, I remember it. <laughs> I remember it very well. And I was kind of surprised, surprised that it was being said in the churches. Now you know that um, church members revere their pastors. So if their conscience were of another persuasion, don't you know if pastors say, pray, for a change of government, that if you had intended to pray for the government in power, you are going to be likely thinking of praying against the government in power. Because pastor says that. And the Jamaica Council of Churches said that we need to do that. The people of God have said we need to do that. You know, the power in influencing people that way. So what God has shown us in this conference is that a number of persons in America, and I don't think Jamaica might be any big different, are using their pulpits to persuade people who to vote for or not vote for. We're talking about the pulpit of God. We're talking about that space that we are fighting for people's soul to end up on the right side of eternity. Hallelujah. Why are we here? Why do we live the way we live? Why do we pray for people, Santina? Why do we counsel people? Why do we um, provoke people unto righteousness? Is not our lives to reconcile others to God? Is not the pulpit a place for us to be able to help people to make it into heaven. That when they hear the proceeding word from our mouth is a proceeding word from God. And God should be speaking. Hearts should be troubled or comforted. An altar is open and people make a deeper commitment if necessary in their hearts to walk in righteousness. If it's not that, and we are preaching politics, 
and listen, brothers and sisters, I'm going to take it further than that. If most of when we are outside of the congregation of the righteous, most of the things we are talking about is not the present truth, it's basically the same thing. It's basically the same thing. What else have we to talk about but Jesus? Hallelujah. Jesus in the morning and Jesus in the evening and Jesus at noontime and to give people hope, not just talking about Jesus, but demonstrating in our lives, in the decisions we make, in our character, that Jesus Christ is truly alive in us. Hallelujah. Are you hearing the Lord today? Hallelujah. So if I ever come up here and use this pulpit to try to get your money that I can use. I don't use your money, guys. You all know that. The monies that are brought to God through your tithe and offering is for the furtherance of this work. But if that should ever happen to anybody that stands in this pulpit, don't you know they would have lost their mind about what this ministry is about? Would you all be looking at us strangely? Hallelujah. If we should stand in this pulpit and try to persuade you to vote for one party or the next, would you tell us that we have lost our minds? What, do you, what is going on with Bishop George or Bishop Carlin today? Where is the word? We're still waiting for the word. So let us hear and understand what God is saying. So let us read this chaotic thing that is happening in the world. So that we can understand why God is actually grieved with aspects of his body today. The Lord is not happy over what some of us as leaders are doing. All right? The world in chaos. All right? I have to read it. All right. All right. So it is an understatement to say that our nation, and that is a murka in terms of how this is written, is divided and our federal and local governments are in turmoil. All right? So, you know, the federal government, that which is overarching government for all the states, and the local governments are those governing the different states, 50 states, I think. It's 50, right? 51? 52, all right? All right, 50, 50, 50 plus, all right? So, each of those states would have their local governments. So, we are, we are looking at, we are, what we are looking at now as America is becoming more and more unfamiliar each day. Can we say that about Jamaica? What we are looking at, our schools, our systems, um, it's looking stranger and stranger every day. You know? Students can cuss out people. Children can look in your face as an elderly and tell you anything that is not nice. And we try to make excuses for them because we then start to talk about the X generation and the Y generation and the Z generation. And we allow it to be normalized because it is now normalized. That's why there is this chaos. Amen? All right. Our citizens are diverse in their native origins, and with each diversity comes civil hatred and communal wars. That's not uncommon to us. All right. There are tribal wars going on still in communities. This side cannot go over to that side. This political persuasion cannot deal with other political persuasion. And closer to an election, it kind of intensifies, right? I truly wish I could say that these hatreds and wars are confined to unbelievers. But that would be a gross misrepresentation of the truth. What God is saying here is that what is happening in the world is also happening in his church. In many cases and in certain environments, Christians are at the forefront of conflict and physical and spiritual violence. All right? 
So what we're saying here is that in some situations, those who are leading these things are the Christians. A lot of them call themselves prophets. They prophesy what God is going to do through this person if they are elected or not, and this other person if they are elected or not, what God is going to do. And when the men and women of God speak that way, don't you know that not only the believers who are listening, but the unbelievers outside there who are listening are taking note. And when, when they say what God did not say, saying God said it, and it doesn't happen, we have seen them sometimes in the past now try to explain it away why it did not happen, even though God said it. Don't we know that when God says what he says, that's just it? You can't um, make it not happen. It must happen. Hallelujah. So the script, that's why he can be trusted. Because he cannot lie. His word cannot be broken. He has all power. Hallelujah. And he gives it to whomever he wants to give it to. So if he wants to give it to an evil governor, he can give it to an evil governor. If he wants to give it to a righteous governor, he gives it to a righteous governor. But whatever he does, he does it according to his own purpose. Hallelujah. 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 So we are not the ones who vote in governments and vote out governments. God is the one who set up government and take them down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you seen what he did to Nebuchadnezzar? It's in the study guide here. Nebuchadnezzar, God allowed him to be a king that at the time conquered and was ruling the whole known world. Including his own people, the people of the children of Israel at one point. Hallelujah. God did that, brought them into captivity under Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar wanted to set up his own God in his kingdom. Hallelujah. But you know what made the difference in that season? There were some righteous people praying. One of them was Daniel. Are you hearing? Ha hallelujah. But you know what happened when we remain righteous? We establish the answer to chaos. So Nebuchadnezzar, you remember him. All right. So Nebuchadnezzar really believed that, you know, he could do anything now. The whole world is under him. All right. So he did certain things and he tried to throw some guys in, um, into a furnace, a fiery furnace. You know, when certain sounds are made, guys, you need to bow down and worship my image, my idol. That's all. All right? Hallelujah. But guess what happened? There were some that knew under Nebuchadnezzar's captivity, there is slave that knew that there was one God. And him alone am I going to bow to and worship. You know what that does? It says that when God speaks to a certain set of people, there will be some jealousy that will never compromise. God can trust them. Now, I have to ask me, and I have to ask you, are you a compromiser? Do you have to give the right answer to please people, knowing that that is not what God really, really wants you to say? Are you afraid of confronting? If you are afraid of confronting, what would cause you to be afraid? Is it that you reverence flesh so much? Or you want the favor of people that you will not confront? You will not say, that's not right. How you treat that little soul, that weaker vessel, that least one. You are so harsh. You are judgmental. 
You did not have enough mercy. God allowed you to see that. And you, the person who is the, um, dispensing the harshness, you are nodding and agreeing with them. You are a partaker of their sin. We ought to be able to stand up and declare righteousness in every single situation, circumstance, and relationship. Hallelujah. Are you hearing the Lord today? Hallelujah. Because if we are not like that, we were referenced to three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were non-compromisers. But in not compromising, the end of that account is that the king saw the Son of God. Because not only were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in that fiery furnace, but the king himself was able to testify and declare as if for four. And the fourth, God made him know that it was the Son of God. The fourth, he looks like the Son of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, because of their um, stance and their absolutelessness and their uncompromising nature, the directive was sent as to who to bow down to now. Not my image anymore. Are you understanding the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I went off script. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because and it's the Holy Ghost, of course. Hallelujah. Because let us let us deal with this um uh fair or reserve reservation in confronting sin. You know why? One of the reasons why? Because we don't want to be confronted either. One. And two, we are afraid of losing our prized place in the connection that you may have with that person. Guys, there was never a place that Jesus went where there was sin and he did not deal with it. He did not confront it. Did we say, Santina, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever? So Jesus Christ is the same in the body that the Virgin Mary gave him. He is the same in the apostles and the saints of the early church. He is the saints in the martyrs who went on. And he is the same in his body right now. So if Jesus in us comes up against sin in a space is going to deal with it the same way Jesus in the body of Mary, the body Mary offered him. Exactly the same way. And if we don't allow him to in these vessels, we are hindering the spirit of God. We are grieving the, the, work, the, the spirit of God. Are you with me? All right. Am I with time, brother? I'm going to try to bring this down. Many Americans are asking, how can we fix our nation? But many Jamaicans are asking that too. Oh, we need a lot more interventions in some of these communities. Oh, we need to change the laws to make the penalty of these crimes more severe. Oh, we need to bring back the death penalty. We need to start killing people again by law. And we are trying to find ways of how to fix what has gone wrong. We need to bring more vocational training into these communities where youths have no skills. We have been doing that for the past many, 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 many years. Has it made a difference? They don't want the skill. The enemy bring in another skill that will teach them how to make a lot of money very fast. So there's a lottery scamming. And they will tell you, some of them, they will sit with, sir, I'm a scammer. You know, I do scamming. That's my okay. Then they are not afraid to tell you. Only that, if you are a police, they're not going to say that to you, you know. But they're not going to sit down and tell you, yeah. How, how would I be able to drive this car if I wasn't a scammer, sir? 
I'm just 19 years old. I don't have a degree. I never finished school. Where do you think I get the money to drive this car from? Are you with me? But we are trying to fix a world as Christians on the principles of worldliness. We are not going to be able to fix this world. But we can fix some hearts in this world, reconcile them, turn them back to God, and help them to find an eternity with Jesus Christ. Are you with me? Now, if we are ministers of reconciliation, hallelujah, we should be the answer to the chaos of this world. We shouldn't be perpetuating it. We should, let me tell you what we shouldn't be doing, guys, at our level. So let us bring it home to our level. We shouldn't be listening to items on the news or on social media. And all of a sudden, it becomes the item we talk about more each day than Jesus Christ and him crucified. And the fact that I understand the mystery and I'm part of the mystery that is walking this earth in earth and vessel. That I have a treasure inside of me that you don't know about. And it has an excellent power. And the excellency of the power is of God and not of flesh. Hallelujah. I must be looking into our eyes and see that the light has gone out. And know that there is a word of hope that I can speak to in this life. Hallelujah. You cannot be passing people, looking in their eyes, saying good morning to them. But it's just a ritual. So you say good morning and you're gone. And the person was about to answer. You didn't hear the answer. Well, good morning and how are you? And you're gone. Guys, we are for people. And we are for people from this perspective. We are their hope. We are their answer to the confusion. What is chaos? Chaos is just gross disorder and confusion. We are the answer to bringing order to their hearts. We are the answer to bringing hope to their hearts. And what is the answer? And what is the hope? That we're going to pray that you get a job? That you get a car, that you get a spouse, that you get a house. That's not the answer. I want to bring an answer to you. Have you ever heard about Jesus Christ? I tell you, I was in a captivity. And this captivity made me go this way. And when I wanted to do the good thing, and I set out to do the good thing, I ended up doing the bad thing. I was a bad boy. I was a bad man. Every time I set out my little heart had some good to do but when I, when I went out, all that happened is I ended up doing bad. And I thought I couldn't help myself. But one day somebody preached a message that Jesus Christ is here and I can be free of this thing that keep me going doing that same bad thing over and over. And I'm here to tell you, you know, my little brother, if the son therefore shall make you free, he has made me free. That's why I'm testifying. Yeah, you I kill a lot of people. Yeah, I couldn't stop fornicating. Yes, there are some dark things I used to do. I'm ashamed to talk about them. So I'm not even telling you what I used to do. But they were not pretty. But the son has set me free. That's why it made different. You knew what my life was before. Now, do you want to be set free from the confusion? From that thing that driving you to do wrong each time you want to do right? Hallelujah. And you are grieved after you don't do the wrong, you know. You say, how could I do that? I've heard a murderer one time say, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have killed that man, you know. I'm so sorry I killed that man. But the reality is, if we are not the answer to the world, the world will never come to Jesus. Are you hearing him today? I'm about finished. We are the answer to the chaos in this world. We should not be political activists. Not just from the pulpit, because the study guys speak about from the pulpit, but in our conversation when we sit and we're talking to our colleagues, we should not be trying to persuade people to vote for who are not who. We are not politicians. If God put it in your heart to go back an X to vote for somebody, 
You know who you're going to vote for? Go do it and leave the arguments alone. Leave it alone. Hallelujah. Let's be who God has placed us on the earth to be. The kingdom of God must be revealed through us. Hallelujah. That's what this entire word is about. We're going to piecemeal it, but the kingdom of God must be revealed through us or we have no value to the kingdom. If we are not able and heed and give over ourselves for the kingdom of God to be revealed through us, mark my word, we will be no value to the kingdom. Hallelujah. 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 And you know why that would be happening? Because we would have done despite the Holy Spirit. Let us not be those ones. Hallelujah. Let's not trample on the blood of Jesus Christ. Let us trample him on the foot afresh. Let's not do that. Hallelujah. I heard Pastor Grace here singing some song, you know, and she said one of the songs, you are my savior and I've just come to say thanks. I come to worship you. I come to honor you because you saved me. Hallelujah. Some of us, God has healed us because you healed me. I don't come to, um, for anything else but to love upon you, Lord. But to love upon you. And when I love upon my brethren, I love them upon you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If somebody walk from out of the world, from the chaos that is there and come inside here, their life should be straightened out. Because what we are giving is the word of life. We are preaching just Christ alone. We're not preaching prosperity. Hallelujah. We're not preaching that you can, um, you have two nature. So the lower nature make you sin and the upper nature sometimes make you not sin. We're not preaching foolishness. We're not preaching doctrines of devils. We're saying to you, God has a word for you. And each time when God speaks, every single time when he speaks, you know it. You hide that word in your heart and you're not going to sin. Every time he speaks, you get that word inside of you and you're not going to sin. You know what you would be walking around as? The word made flesh. Hallelujah. You'll be walking around and every single thing that you do and say, people will just hear Christ and see Christ and handle Christ. Hallelujah. And this is what we have been created for. Hallelujah. We're supposed to be able to come to people and when they come to us, the only thing that we are doing is declaring that Christ. And the declaration does not have to be just by words. Because there are some declar decla de declarants, or whatever you call them, they are saying the right thing, but doing a totally opposite thing, deceiving them themselves. Hearers of the word, but not doers, and can parrot the words, not experiencing the words themselves, because they are not doing. The only way we experience God's word, you know, is when we do it. The only way that you are going to see the power in suffering is when you maintain your peace and love your enemy and love your offender. That's the only way you're going to see the power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What power is it? Somebody asked me this. What power is it that you are demonstrating when everything is going right for you and you have your peace and you're happy. Doesn't that go on with the sinners, those in the world? What about when everything is turned upside down? What about when there is suffering and adversity and persecution and hardships and necessity and people are about to tell you, why don't you just curse God? God is not helping you. But you're smiling. You've not lost your peace. And you know that this is ordained by God because this is part of the token that I have to give in exchange for eternal life. Hallelujah. Are you hearing the Lord today? I hope you're hearing the Lord because I'm excited each time I think about the fact that I belong to you. I belong to Jesus. We 
belong to Jesus. The devil does not own us. Hallelujah. He has no power over us. Hallelujah. So you have to, you have to see how you pray too. Because the enemy has no power over us, Santina. Hallelujah. Anything that comes to us that the Lord allows, when we live in holy, sorry, is the Lord allows it. And it is to prove something to Satan. And sometimes it's to keep us looking up. You know, there are circumstances in your life that won't change because that is what caused you to be on your face before God every day. Hallelujah. You know, that could be your um, figurative thorn in your flesh. Hallelujah. To keep you humble so you don't get exalted. You have to be in your, in your prayer closet. You have to be praying in your car. You have to be praying when you sit in your office. When you're walking and you're thanking God, the breeze is blowing in your face and you can feel it. You're praying and you're praising and you're praying and you're praising and you're worshiping and you're studying and you're reading. Hallelujah. God knows what each of us need. And the devil cannot take anything to us that God did not give him to carry. Hallelujah. Anything we're going through that look like suffering is God gives Satan to carry. Satan is just a carrier. But it's part of what is supposed to be on our plate to make it into heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's rejoice. Hallelujah. Let's not be confused about what's happening. Hallelujah. Let's not look at the disorder and do know that there is order in our kingdom. Hallelujah. That we have, we, have, um, we have leaders that God established. If we don't understand something, we can go to them. Hallelujah. We don't have to be confused. We have structure that is outlined by scripture. And God sets up the structure to guide us, to oversee us, to protect us, to contend for our souls and for us to contend for our own souls. Isn't that something to rejoice about? Hallelujah. Is that something to rejoice about? Because some of us are in this ministry, hallelujah, called Bible Teachers International Ministry, and we don't even understand the purpose and the extent for what this ministry is called for and it's about. You know what the, what the purpose of this part of the body is? When God called for this ministry to come forth, for us to walk to be a demonstration of everything that he's spoken to the church. That's what God said. That he's raising up a set of people. And some of us are already demonstrating. Being that word. That people can look at and say. Oh my God. That's the living epistle of the word. That's the word become flesh. That's very Christ over there. Miss can you pray for me. Pass everybody else. Because I say Christ. Can you pray for me at this situation? Can you pray for me? No longer chaos for them. They've seen a hope. They've seen maybe my life can become ordered because there's something about her. There's something about her. There's something about him. It is Christ. So today, I just wanted to encourage us. I wanted to encourage us. That we have been privileged. We have been privileged, first of all, by just having to receive God's Spirit. It's a big deal for us to have the Holy Ghost. Santina, it's a big deal. If God ever visit us and say, you know, today is your day. Hallelujah. Today you have satisfied my heart that you have believed me. It's time now for me to dispense the Holy Spirit. And God brings a son, a life-giving creature, to pray with you and lay hands on you. Hallelujah. Don't you know that you're going to receive the Holy Ghost? And it's a big, big, big deal. Hallelujah. Big deal. But to be brought in a ministry as Bible Teachers International, where God speaks to us each time before he does anything in the church and the world. 
and we watch to see what he says happens. And it happens. And it happens again. And again and again. Don't take that as something that is, oh, God speak and him always do. Don't take it that way. Let us be happy and glad and excited that God works with the ministry that you're a part of. Are you hearing God? That God does nothing and it's scriptural before he tells his people. He's going to tell you what he's going to do before it happens. And I thank God for the ministry. Let's give God a clap offering of faith. Hallelujah. God is good. I don't know how many of you have entertained this ministry long enough, but I have for a couple of decades, and I can tell you it has changed and saved me. It has saved my life, saved my marriage, saved my, my work, because this life that I'm now living, Santina, is not compartmentalized. It's not for when I come into the sanctuary. Outside of the sanctuary, I need this life more than inside of the sanctuary. Hallelujah. But some of us, we're not evangelizing sufficiently. People need to see Christ. So even my clients, I don't know if they're going to see somebody else that is full of the Holy Ghost when they finish dealing with me. So am I going to say, oh, this is my profession, so I can't talk about Christ or act out Christ. I, no, I am just his servant, his son. Wherever I'm placed, I am Christ. Christ is Christ in me wherever he goes. And he doesn't take on different forms to accommodate different mindsets. He is just Christ. So may we today be encouraged by what we are in, how God is using us, how he intends to use us. You think you really see God use us yet to say, Thelma? Well, when the thing turns up later on in this world, when the heat turns up, when things get worse, people trying to save the world, some of us believe that we are going to be able to save the planet with all of this carbon, what, it, what they call it again? Huh? Sorry? The, the, all of these greenhouse gases and all of this, whatever they're saying, and how the sea coming in on land and how all kinds of this. You think we're going to be saving this world? No. We're going to be saving some of the people of this world for the kingdom. But better now go come. All right? This world is not going to get any better. For those of you who are non-Jamaicans listening, there is no better to come. Let us work while it is day because the night is fast approaching when none of us will be able to work. God has given us this time and he keeps saying to us and he said it in the conference for the rest of our lives. What that means, what is rest, what is left of us to live here on earth. We must work hard. Hallelujah. We must work hard. There are souls which are depending on us and we must work hard. I want to thank you, those of you online or watching or listening. I hope you were encouraged. The Lord loves us. We are not those living in chaos. We are part of the kingdom and God has sent a true word to us each time and he just wants us to embrace what he has said. Let us continue to be the righteousness of God. Let's continue to enjoy the peace set apart and joined to the Lord. Let us enjoy the joy that is in the kingdom of God. We should be the happiest set of people in the earth because we have been given the joy of the Lord. Amen. So God bless you. And until so long, for those of you who are online, this is Pastor George Leverage from Prairie St. Anne and Montego Bay. Um, be good until next time.